Hey folks, Chris Salisbury again. Uh, this portion of the video, we're going to uh, go over the uh, quirks, the features, uh, a few things maybe I would do if I kept the car, uh, things that we've done, uh, a few things that were moved, some updates we've done, uh, just so you feel comfortable with your purchase when it does arrive at your home. A lot of folks have always been concerned with the doors and how the doors stay propped up. Um, put down in here is a torsion bar. It's counter-rotated and then when it's released, it's the pressure that lets the, lets, when the spring's released, the energy allows the door to stay up. Now these struts, uh, these gas shocks actually, also help keep the door in the up position as well. Um, if you look back at old video, when the DeLorean was made in Ireland, um, you see video of the guys at the factory doing this. They're sitting there testing the tension. And actually the doors only really came to about right here, I think it was. Now this strut here, or gas shock, allows it to go the rest of the way and stay there. As long as I've owned this car, which is about four years now, I keep this car, of course I have a kill switch, the batteries are always off, or battery. Uh, it stays in this up position. The reason I keep the doors in the up position is because all the pressure is off of that spring, so it's, there's no, uh, it gives it longer life. Um, when it's always in the down position, there's pressure on that, always wanting to lift open because that's just what it does. But when you take the pressure off of it, it ensures the life. My last DeLorean, same thing, it was up for years. Never, very seldom did I ever put that door down. I don't have to wash it and drive it, of course, but um, it, it always sat like this. So that gives you that good springy door. Let's go to the right hand side while we're here. Now these are the soft lifts that special uh, specialty used to sell and he may still uh, john's passed away like i said earlier but the the company's still going i think what they do is they go up fast and to last a little bit they go a little slower so they don't slam into the up position like the other system does let's go into some wear of the seats just we just happen to be here um this is a problem spot many years ago with the seam someone before me had just shown this up a little bit um you can tell these are the original seats that came in the car your threading still has threading on there. It's not been like sprayed or dyed where that would still be, where that would be the same color as the dye. Um, you can buy these kits from DeLorean Motor Company. Um, the kit's about four to five hundred dollars, I think it is, for the new covers. Um, these seat cushions are in ridiculously nice shape. Um, I've never colored them, had no interest in doing that. Very little fadeage, a little fadeage on the sides. Back here's solid, back here's great. Um, a little fadeage on the dash. Um, nothing that's alarming, nothing that, nothing that bothered me enough to where I would have taken care of, but it's very, very minor. Uh, notice the bezel doesn't have a crack in it. A lot of bezels get cracks from time because they are getting sun beaten. Um, there's no crackage there. Um, if you actually notice, uh, there were, it, 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 hopefully when the time comes and you've seen the Jalopnik stuff, which was kind of what we were starting, what we were talking about when we started this, was um, I have replaced the uh, gear shift ball with the stainless steel one. It weighs like two pounds. Um, but you'll notice the uh, Pioneer radio from the 80s or 90s, uh, well, the CD player, um, as you see in that same photo. There's only a few photos that Jill Ottmick left up, so you'll see that that's that same one um, from there. So the floor mats I installed here, they give it some color because it is pretty gray in there. Um, now look right here. I do have three keys, two that were never used. My hotel ticket from the other night. Uh, There's a picture of the car from many years ago which will come with the car, of course. Uh, my tax bill, uh, that's my registration. Pretty much like you're at the, it, I'm trying to make folks feel like they're actually here, right? Going through the glove box. Um, the DeLorean registration, uh, the emissions warranties for 81 vehicle, uh, DeLorean Owners Association. I think they are still a group, actually. Um, might have been one of the owners. Here's the owner's manual. There is some goodies powder wrapper. A FedEx envelope from some time back for something we sent off to a customer, I'm sure. And I, the day I happened to maybe actually drove this car. So, right. now I do have uh, two extra keys that were never used. They come with the car, of course. Um, but I had just I just found those last week. I just kind of milled around the car trying to decide if do I want to sell it? Um, what do I need to speak about when I, uh, when I go over this vehicle? What, what am I gonna show a customer? Um, when you close this, small details, I guess. Keep this closed. Then push it down. Then like an old beetle, old beetle, and or old rabbit, I guess, is what it feels like. An old rabbit glove box handle. So um, seats were adjusted by just grabbing the handle down here. It slides it back and forth. And you rotate it like an older beetle, if you will, or older bug, uh, or rabbit, or Volkswagen product. Mm -hmm. It's probably set up something off of Renault's, actually. A lot of cars, uh, Renault, uh, Lotus, uh, a lot of those cars share parts with the DeLorean. In fact, the windshield is the same windshield for a Lotus Esprit. Now we're at the motor. 
I think I went into earlier that these are at my house in the garage and why I had taken them off to get to my lock, which I do have a lock assembly. Um, actually, look at this. She's still holding, holding at 40 PSI fuel pressure. Um, these vehicles have a fuel distributor system that sits up top of here. There's a fuel accumulator under the right hand front side of the car uh, by the wheel well. Um, it's a K Jetronic system. When it's right, it's right. When it's not, it's kind of crappy. Uh, this seems to be okay. Uh, Some time back, I had like a skip, or it just it just wasn't it just didn't feel right. And uh, so I took a few spark plugs out. They're older. Uh, I had put them in years ago, but really didn't drive the car a whole lot. So I replaced those. Made a little adjustment on my mixture screw. It doesn't is it's not accelerating as as quickly as I think it should. But for those who've watched the video up to this point, you've seen it driving, you've seen it moving. So it's not like it can't get on its own way. It's just it's not as potent as it was before. Uh, and I may figure it out before it leaves. I, but I'm letting everybody know I don't think it's 100% right. But I can go crank it up right now. It runs as it should. Uh, since that drive and all that's been done is parked here, can we get the temperature gauge? barely moved bottom up down there it's barely moved it does work give it a little bit it might warm back up a little more and, and, and you hit the next bar if you get down low enough if you get down low enough you'll see it's probably sitting around 140 160 right now can i get down low right there so people see like i said earlier this vehicle has the lower amperage uh cooling fans now that produce that uh, uh draw less amperage uh, i think about half than the ones that came in the vehicle originally um, now let's get to a negative thing on the vehicle something i did it was cool out when i did this um, I was tired that night. I was irritated in the process of installing my uh, new cooling fans. I pulled the condenser out to the side and I kind of stepped on it and broke it. Never got back to putting it back in the car. So the, the line is sitting there. It's been plugged off and crimped. At the age of the car, probably getting into the system there, it's going to need a, the new line from the middle of the car towards the, uh, towards the front there. Uh, so there's no... Con uh, the AC actually, the system worked compressor engaged things like that i don't think the air was cold when i got it it was also 30 degrees out when i got the car you know several years ago uh, so you're gonna need a new condenser installed the line that runs to it probably because it's got debris and it's you're just never going to clean it out it's not why try just going to buy new parts now uh i think sanda is it sanda is the company San sankyo is a company. I found uh, I found it's the car. So let's just pretend it's not. Uh, actually, we'll turn the car off real quick. I found between eleven to twelve hundred dollars for a complete system: um, condenser, um, compressor, um, lines. Uh, all your switches and slide actuate this just fine. So I'm figuring a customer. I want a customer to figure between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars on the high side. Uh, this, you're gonna need a new air compressor. Uh, it's never been a concern of mine. Never cared. I put a thousand miles on the car in four years, uh, so I want, I want a customer to know that's something they're gonna want, want to think about. Uh, now, when I received the vehicle, uh, four calipers had been completed. The water pump had been completed. Uh, when I received the vehicle, I didn't have any paperwork showing that these had been taken care of. Your warm-up regulator, your cold starts. I took care of all those. While I um, had that off, came back around here and took care of the frequency valve. Uh, John Hervey again uh, would sell them cleaned out, refurbished, or whatever. Uh, the car ran like a top, like it should. It replaced three parts, did like it should. That's, I think it's when I did the plugs at the same time. Actually, nowadays in this light, you can probably take a peek down there and see the turbos. I do not feel a whole lot of power coming from the turbos. They do work, the wastegates actuate. Uh, there's no intercooler system hooked to them. They're just a basic, just push through some energy into the intake. Uh, they, there is a boost gauge uh, on the right-hand side by the kick panel of the steering wheel. Uh, I see steady five to seven PSI, maybe five, six PSI that it pulls. I know the system works because also, we, you feel the air, but when you let off, it actually draws vacuum, so it's actually in the negative. Uh, okay, windows. When I got the vehicle, the left or right worked just fine. One was a little off track. Years earlier, my first DeLorean, 
I took the windows out because they were rusted and they were corroded and I didn't want to do it. There wasn't as much uh, information in the early 2000s online. We didn't have really online. We didn't have Google. We didn't have the ease of the internet. So I just pulled the panel out, took the two screws and I slid the, uh, I, I, I slid the uh, side windows out. On this vehicle, one mirror, one, uh, one worked okay. The other was cockeyed. It, I said, you know what? It was so easy last time. I don't want them getting stuck up. I just took them out. Plus, I didn't want them rattling in there if that was going to be a case as well. So I do have both classes. There's nothing in here currently, but I do have both classes, uh, both windows, uh, quarters to go in there. Uh, they'll come with the car, and you can install them yourself when you're ready. Uh, I installed new tires on it about a year or two ago. Uh, it's, you have a uh, BF Goodrich radial TAs in the rear. You have uh, the Finities from Pet Boys on the front. Any DeLorean no owner knows, I think only Pirelli right now is the only company, and I might be wrong, but I'm a member of the DeLorean or, or, or Owners Association and the, the Facebook groups and all, and somebody always posts a video, uh, or, or hey, look what I found, these were in stock today, or on sale, to get a matching set of, say, good years for the rear, good years for the front. Uh, but these are the correct tire size, they're just two different brands. So what I did was I did my best to get two, well, the, the rear is always, BF Goodriches, those are easy to get. This is one of my favorite tires. Those are the tires I put on like my 70s Corvettes and things. It's just kind of balloony, 235, 255 rears. Um, but the front's a Definity, I think it's a 195, 70, 14. Just an average tire, probably cost $100 per tire. Uh, it's not much to put new tires on this if you had to. But I do crank the car at least once a week, let it run for 15 minutes, go down, come back, hopefully turn it around a little bit and not uh, go a little further than I did. Rather just for turning it back into spot and getting it a, uh, uh, so, so we can sit in another flat spot for another couple of weeks. Uh, wipers work just fine. There's a nick right here on the window. It's not in the eyesight. It's not, it's not in the line of sight. But it's a little nick right there. But it's very small. But I want everybody to see it because these windows are expensive. My last vehicle had eyebrows. Those in the DeLorean community know what eyebrows are. And it's when heat and time stretch and cause these to go loop right there. In fact, I have a friend of mine locally who was doing some service on one. Uh, it hasn't driven in a while, but he calls me and he says, hey, what year is your DeLorean? I say 81. I said, why? He says, what's the difference with the front ends? I was like, what do you mean? All the cars are the same. And he sends me a picture and I said, oh, those are eyebrows. So this does not have eyebrows. Um, this has been cared for most of its life. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna guess not outside where it gets hot and it warps like plastic does. Now if you if you come in here kind of close, Chad, um, this was a stainless steel trim piece with no color, just a silver color to it. I wanted the car to have a little bit of a little bit, a little more life up front. So I pulled these bezels off, pull these covers off, shot them in a high tip paint, almost like a epoxy type paint. They've been on there for years that way. So that's different than what it came on the factory. Um, Front spoiler is in great shape. Now, if you zoom in right here on the paint, right here, mm -hmm. just a little bit of color or clear, if you will, has gone away. So you have a little little section right here. It's not flaking or anything. It's just a little spot, right? Just just right there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good front fascia. Now, earlier I just uh, when I said it was a flat hood, I, I meant to say it was a grooved hood. Uh, grooved hoods have these lines. You have a gas flap door car as well. And if you if, if I pop the hood, you would see the uh, the trunk, if you will, uh, a cutout where the original 8081 cars, uh, you know, the early early cars, had a portion that went like this. The gas fill was right there, and it closed back down. But in the 80s, everybody did what? Went through car washes. Those little car washes and things. That, they used to get the little blue thing stuck in the corner of your car. Anyways, they would catch those, whip them, and break them off. So they went to, at some point went to a flat hood or a grooved hood, because there's three different types of hoods you can get. And I might be wrong, because there's, there's, there's people who probably know a lot more about these than I do. Uh, so leave a comment below if you're like, hey, you're on, Chris. But my first DeLorean was a flat hood, and a DeLorean emblem that looks very similar to the rear emblem in the trunk or on the back bumper. It, said it had a kind of a raised emblem that sat right there. I think that, I think I have one extra now that came off of one of my old cars. It's on my, refri on my Samsung refrigerator at the house. Tell us a little bit the antenna. Is it meant to be bent like that or? No, uh, the antenna when it was new, or when I received the vehicle, was sitting more straight up and down and it came to about here, like a Chevette. It was really high. And uh, so now, for, for those who may ask who don't know, the DeLoreans came with an antenna here 
an antenna in the windshield, and an antenna back in this corner back over here. I think it was on this side. A little spot right here, and your antenna came through here. These cars from when they were sold were almost still in development, so they were always making little changes here or there. So, but back to your intent to ask your, to answer your question. For like the first two or three years I had it, it was cut to roof height. It stood straight up. Then one day I walked past it and I said, that'd look kind of cool if I just turned it to an angle. And so I just sat right there and I put a little vice grip on it, slightly bent it, put it there, put this little cover on it. It's been there ever since. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. All the keys do open um, the doors as they should. Um, and lock. Uh, of course, the, all three keys operate the ignition as well. A lot of cars will get mismatched keys, and one key will work this, and one key will work that. That's not the case here. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, the undercarriage is very clean. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to get some photos that convey that. Uh, the undercarriage is very clean on this car. Um, it does look like a 40-year-old car, but it looks like a well-cared for. There's a lot of stainless parts and pieces and aluminum trimmings and all that underneath. Those are still in great shape and shiny. I washed this undercarriage in a, like a watered-down acid, if you will. The whole undercarriage about two or three years ago, it just came like clean again. It's very nice. Uh, nothing else I can tell you. Um, I've added up. I've added up between two and three thousand dollars between carrying it to someone to adjust the mixture with a dwell meter. Uh, to an AC system called about a thousand dollars, maybe fifteen hundred. So call that around two thousand uh, dollars. The uh, what, I'm forgetting something. Uh, condenser, uh, windows, new motors. You can actually, if you really want to fool with it, you can go online. Uh, Stephen Wynn, Stephen Wynn, the president of Delorean Motor Company out of Humble, Texas. He, they have all these how-to videos, and one of the how-to videos. I remember that earlier when I had my first car, I didn't really know how to do it because you didn't have videos. And I do a manual come with the car as well. My point was back in the early 2000s and late 90s, when I had my first DeLorean, uh, there wasn't a video like there is now, which is a door panel. Stephen Wynn has it hooked to something and he does a whole door job where you do uh, all of the, uh, uh, the, the left and right hand side regulators, install your window, switches, things of that nature. So there's a, there's a how to video out there for quite a bit, a lot of the, uh, quite a, quite a bit a lot of things quite a bit quite a bit a lot of what, what who should have got um there's quite a many videos out there just, there are quite a few videos out there that can break down some things for you to do on your own uh, fuel pump um, oh extra parts it comes with a fuel pump it's going to come of course i have the spare tire it just happens to not be in the guards in, the, in my workshop uh, the jack comes with the vehicle as well but i have if the buyer gets a hold of me and we start talking, I like them. I've got, I've got some neat memorabilia that a lot of people don't have because I am a car guy and a car collector and a collector of stuff. I'm not a hoarder. I'm just saying I like, you know, neat memorabilia. I got some, I got some paperwork from when the car was built that very few people have seen. Various toys will come with it. You know, just I, I, I can only have so many DeLorean toys that people have given me over the years. I can only put those so many places. The mirror's a little bit loose. It's, that's why it's at a funny angle. Now with that, it, now the, the mirror, the power mirror works just fine. So I found a little sweet spot where it stays locked in place, doesn't move. And when the mirror's kicked out where it belongs, you, you got a good, uh, a good view of the uh, quarter panel and on down the road. But generally when it sits in the garage, it sits like this, you know. It will come with a car cover that actually was for my GTS Viper. It's in silver, stainless looking silver, bright silver. It's got some cool lines that actually fits right here with the mirror. It's for the Viper GTS. I don't know why I have the extra one. If you are my customers and you're watching this and you're missing your Viper GTS car cover, it's probably not for your car, but I'm just saying I have an extra one. Um, but that will come with the car as well. It wraps up nice and tight. Um, come over here to this right front wheel. We didn't plan any of this folks. We're just from the hip. See right here. A little clear coat is flaked off from time on that rim right there. That's really the worst wheel out of all of them. I want that. Oh, here. Okay. The character it has. There's a ding right here. I almost never think of it or see it. It just, it's not something I think of, but it's right there. To fix that, you have to take off this whole panel. And you, you will have a new, that's how the car was designed. You have to separate it from the um, fiberglass shell that it's hooked to. All these screws come off. Screws along there come off and the idea is that panel comes off, a new panel gets put back on. So 
If you're looking at this and you're thinking that a PDR paint dentless, or paintless dent removal guy is going to fix that, you are wrong. Unless you're taking this panel off and fixing that panel right there. Um, factoid, uh, your front left fender is the most expensive panel on this car. This, that was the least made part or at least made body panel was the left front fender. There's actually a fellow I was reading about who has been making or working on making uh, replicas. It's still stainless steel. You know, you have a template you use and create some other ones, but they are out there for sale uh, for upwards of two to three thousand. I think I found. So you'll never notice me sit on the left fender of one of these um, for that one, that main reason. And it's just why you don't need to sit in your car. Actually, talk about water pump. I am going to release the pressure. We need a second, put the camera down there so the customer, because it should be nice and warm. Uh, they'll see where the coolant flows as it circulates right there. You're going to crank it? I'm going to crank it right up. Okay. It's not going to squirt out? on this louver. This is so, oh, I'm glad I popped back up. I almost forgot. One pellet, one trip back in time. What is it, Heidi? <laughs> I know I said I didn't know about the future stuff, right? I will try and find the sweet spot and solder onto the signaling unit, which is on top of the, I guess it's on the gas tank where the fuel pump is. Um, the gas gauge reads full. When I find the little sweet spot, I kind of touch it, it'll go, it'll, the gas gauge will go to where it belongs. Uh, but really it's just, it's just over time, it's just a little tab, it wore off. It just kind of, from being moved around, it just popped off. Gas gauge went to full. But if I put it back on, it'll read the gas correctly. Mm -hmm.